Ladies, gentlemen, and individuals of all persuasions. So the wonderful people at Roll20 have informed us that there is a ton of new Mother Hubbards pouring onto the site. That's feckin' glorious. And so what I thought I'd do is I'd try and make a, make a new game, start a campaign. And then I realised I'm a feckless idiot. So I reached out to that gentleman over there, Baron Sheep who is the creator of uh, Roll20 sponsored uh, Memory Equals Null and also the creator of the Reclamation of Oak Hollow, a, a cornucopia of multiple one-shot games tied together in a labyrinthian narrative. Or something along those lines. Yeah, more or less. Uh, links to Baron down in the doobie-doo. So, Baron set up a bunch of campaigns here on Roll20 and so I was like, Baron! Baron, please show me how I can do this so I'm no longer a feckless idiot. Um, I have started more games than I would care to count on Roll20, because I'm actually now looking at my subscriber page here, and it says I've been a member since 2014, apparently. Oh, so God. That's a thing. I I've played a casual but, 153 hours. Uh, 678. You know, not, not bad. just a few. Like, honestly, not, more, not as many as a lot of other people, but, you know, still not nothing. But uh, as you have put together a bunch of games, dude, I wondered if you'd take me through creating a new one and showing other people how to do the same. Yeah. So, what are you going to do? Yep. You're going to scroll down there. Or, no, sorry. Up, right up there at the top. Mm -hmm. Just create new game. All right. Oof. Create new game. So, By the power of everyone's, pl everyone's playing 5th edition D&D, &D, so we're going to just do this tutorial for that. I'm okay. Um, so, first of all, you need a game name. This is real important. It has to be really, really vital. It'd be um, something as epic as like the misadventures of the chosen few, or it could be sexygoblins.jpg. I don't care. You do you. Sexygoblins.jpg. Tags. Cool. Goblins. Um. So the tags is actually useful for their built-in looking for group feature. Oh, so lovely. You're like. It's that's where how you tag things are like fifth edition. Um, I think you do things like every other week. I've never actually used their looking for group feature because you you to. are swimming in players, my friend. Um, but that's where you would tag like all right. So this is like a grim dark campaign. This is like biweekly. This is you know level one characters. This is persistent world things oh, like cool. that. That's so if add, you were you if, you, for that. if you were jumping on roll twenty without like a pre made group, you could be like, hey, I need friends. Yeah, a GM can just be like, here's a game, I need players. And players are like, I, I'm a player, I need a GM. And then they find each other that way. Wait, cool. um, so, that's that's what those are used for. Uh, it also can help you. I've heard of people, I don't use it this way. Okay, um, okay. But I've heard of people using it as like ways to sort their various games, like people that run tons and tons of games. All right, um, so so sort of like, ah, this is that game. I'm looking at two things. I'm looking at the optional choose character sheet and the optional choose module. Yes. So we're going to go with uh, optional choose character sheet. Uh -huh. We're going to scroll on down. It should be one of the first ones there. So you see it says D&D &D 5e, this is fifth, fifth edition. By Roll20? Uh, by Roll20. So that is their built-in character sheet. Yeah. There are also player-made character sheets. Ooh. If you just search D and D, D ampersand D, it'll bring up all the fifth edition, well, actually all of the D&D, &D, and then you can further narrow it down to fifth edition. How nice. All of the player-made character sheets. If you really want to go super nuts, you can actually make your own, but I think that requires the pro level tier. Okay. So I know this sheet from the, the player side, so I'm happy with this, yeah. but yeah. So for now, we're just we're just gonna do that. So that and then uh you just you just click I'm ready, create game. Okay. I'm ready. Create the game. Pachow. So it'll drag you to this page. Um you can optionally it's not required. Actually, a bunch of my games don't have this. You can drag a like banner image there, so to kind of help you visually represent the games, kind of like a, uh, I don't know, just a an avatar for that campaign. Yeah. Now um, you can I put don't that in. have you know. art on hand for sexygoblins.jpg, but I'm sure there's some out there. Uh, search don't, uh, don't in your you? own danger. Don't you will? Don't you? I am under no obligation to admit anything on this video. So, okay. what else we got? <laughs> um, so, uh, you've got things like your contents, which is the chat archive and the external journal. Um, you've got right. looking for players, which is where you create a listing where, like I said, with those those tags, you can say, this campaign is actively looking for players. 
Um, there's other various settings, which include game settings, API scripts, which is super in-depth stuff. Oh, wow. Uh, so you can go game... proper into the API stuff if you want to. Yes, uh, which they use JavaScript, I believe. So if you know JavaScript and you want to go nuts on it, you can. Nice. Um, you can clear the chat archive, which I've done several times just to uh, make sure my players are actually keeping notes because I've had way <laughs> too many players keep notes in the chat and then I'll just clear it. And they're like, <gasps> where did all my notes go? I'm like, you should have been keeping proper notes. <laughs> Oh, um, there's, a, there's a maniacal <laughs> smile there. Uh, delete the game or roll back the game, things like that. You yep. can add a description for your game, like you could say this is the continued adventures of Sexy McGoblin or whatever. I don't care. Um, the game add ons is. There. There. Band of Heroes. He I can't spell. God That's bless. fine. You don't need to spell it, it's the internet. Okay. Um, Game add-ons, uh, like it says, includes things like custom decks, maps, adventures, and more into your game. So if you buy one of their pre-made, like if you're playing um, Temple of Elemental Evil or whatever, yeah, if you bought that from Roll20, that's where you would add that onto your game. It would add all those assets automatically into your game. Have you awesome. used any of those um, game add-ons? I don't because I am that weird person that likes to build all of their worlds from scratch every time. So <laughs> I don't like, I don't like pre-made adventures, but that's just me. That's how I run. That's understandable. That's the thing about D and D is everyone runs the games differently, so that's how I run my games. If you want to pick up a module, do it. They're actually a really good place to start. Um, and roll twenties are like the same price as they are everywhere else. So. Oh, that's way cool. So it's not like that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I um, quickly created a uh, a campaign forum of goblins. How how hot are they? And this is the other thing is that if you have like this is something we actually might start using in uh, the Ocala campaign. Like, this could be a way that if we weren't using other third party software, we'd be like, "Hey, I'm looking for a party to run a game on Saturday, who is available." And you can do that. Like that you can have these forums to help discuss things like uh, like overarching theories about the lore or about like the story or just even just divvying up a loot at the end. Like if you're running late and you're like cool, I'll divvy up loot later. And you can just create a post there saying, like, cool, you all got a thousand experience each and a hundred gold. Quite there cool. you go. So I'm Things looking like at that. the other ones. Uh, I'm seeing mm -hmm. uh, token marker sets. Uh, is that something I need to think about right now? That is not something to think about right now because cool. the default ones are actually pretty cool. There's free ones. That's if you've paid for um, tokens in Roll20's marketplace. You can load them in there. Um, but you can also just do that later. Why cool. You start off with their, their free ones, and then if you decide, yeah, I want some of these like awesome marketplace ones, which are made by users, and then they sell them via Roll Twenty, and then they get each person gets cut, like the creator gets cut, Roll Twenty gets a little cut, um, and then you get to add them. I actually I bought, oh god, I've probably bought twenty different token sets at this point. <laughs> um, uh, I only saw the uh, fancy then, robot ones you bought, and those were for um, uh, for shameless plug for memory equals null. For the Balu Ball, yeah. no less. And those were awesome. Yeah. Uh, actually, you've seen some of the other premium ones that I've, I've purchased for, like, Ocala and stuff. Uh, some of the monster tokens are premium ones. Very cool. But, okay. Yeah. So I've got my name. Oh. I've got my description. I have a couple forum posts. I'm ready to mm -hmm. start a game, right? Yes. So then you would eventually need people for your game. So you can either click that Invite Players uh, button, which I believe generates an email link that you can email to people, or oh, nice. once you're in the actual game, there is a link you can just copy and paste to people, and they click it, and it throws them in the game. So this uh, so, apps roll twenty join long string of thingies. Yes. So we're gonna <laughs> hopefully click... we don't end up with a bunch of people just jumping Actually, into might... sexy goblins. No, just just leave it. We'll just run a campaign for them down the line or something. Anyway, yeah. for now, let's go ahead and launch game. Okay. So it'll uh it'll do its wow. little thing here. Uh, you're probably getting an ad. Um, uh, if you do game. not pay for their premium service, you get ads. If you pay for any of their premium tiers, the four ninety nine or the uh, nine ninety nine service, it removes that ad at the beginning of the loading screen. Um, oh, to be fair. To be fair. To be fair. Um, it's not trying to sell me protein powder or life insurance. It's trying to sell me more awesome dungeons. So it's not really a hardship. Yeah, it's, it's not that bad. Um, so, you are now presented with this screen. Uh, on the left-hand side, up at the top, you have your, like, 
all of your tools. So you got yep. move select. You've, oh, you've I need got to... your various layers. Through the powers of magic, I'm going to move Baron so we can all see it better. Boop. All right, Baron, you're now you're now right next to me. Cool. Um, you've got your drawing tool. You've yep. got um. You've got your your beam of your effects to see like uh magical effect. There's so many casts like lightning. You can actually do animated lightning now, which is awesome. Um you have your various zoom tools, you have yep. your snap to center or your um uh oops. Your ruler tool, which shows you how far apart things are. Um your reveal tool, which is if you're using fog of war, which is a whole video in and of itself, so we're not gonna do that. Oh yeah. You have your turn order. I'm not ready. No. Uh, you have your turn order counter, which is very important, so keep going where that is. Yes. You have your ge your generic dice roller here, so if you can either, in the chat on the far right side, just type slash R or slash roll uh, space whatever dice combination you want. So, like, if you're rolling a d20, it's just slash R space 1d20, or yeah. in this little menu here, you can just hover over a d20 or 2d20 or 3d20 or 5d20. Like, just pick a thing, and it'll... It'll roll in the chat for you. All right, 5d20. Then... Wish me luck, Baron. Okay. What'd you get? Because I got 51. Uh, oh, I got 58. But Ooh. 16, 11, nat 20, and then a Ooh. 5 and a 6. Oh, mine are all real average. Now, I this is one thing I remember as a player. If you want to, you can set it to have physical dice doing the roll. Uh, yes. Enable that... 3d dice. Automatically yeah. roll 3d dice. Which is um, actually something they've... They've improved upon significantly, and I love that they do it this way now. Because before, you used to roll the dice, and the the result would appear in chat before the dice finish. And now they've actually like, no, that ruins the suspense. So now the three D dice have to resolve, and then it puts it in chat. Nice, which is awesome. Well, it would you like actually a... feels like? Yeah. Would you like a three dimensional rematch? Ooh, yeah, we could do that. All right, here we go. All right, five D twenty. Five D twenty. Oh, forty five. I also got 45. Whoa. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, you can click anywhere just so, to make them disappear. Yep, so first campaign. First campaign. So uh, basic things that you need to know. Top right. of the chat there. You've got, uh, going left to right, like the little wind, little icons there. You've got chat, which is yep. chat. You have your art library, which is things like where your premium tokens, um, anything that you drag into the game. Like if you find a map on, you know, whatever website that you decide to use, you drag it in here, it'll be under this tab. Guess you just um, found all the goblins for his sexy goblins. Yeah. You have your journal, which is where uh, eventually your players, um, your handouts, your things like that will all be. So actually, let's 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 go into that real quick. So click add. Uh, okay, so add. Right? Yeah, I mean, you're eventually going to need characters, so let's add a character. Okay. It automatically oh. gives it a... A random name, just by default. That's um, just how it does. To then I'd like them. to introduce you to uh, Obes uh, Hukat. Yeah. Obes um, Hukat the Goblin. So, and then normally you would, in a player's journal, you would do whoever's character this is. Yeah. So it's in, for instance, your character or your journal. Um, and then can be edited and controlled by, again, same character. If you do them differently, like you could have it in everyone's journal so everyone can see everyone else's character sheets. Okay. But only one person can edit it, which is actually kind of cool. Um, and then you can add tags if you want. Um, you can add custom art. Like if you decide to draw your character, you can add a, like a little avatar there. Um, to add a token, you would s drag a token onto the map, select it, and then you just click the little you selected token thing there. It's not that hard. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so I just, because I threw all those goblins on earlier, I could just be like, ah, that one! Yeah. Um, so then just for, you know, the sake of argument, click Save Changes. Save uh, changes. You'll first be you'll first be posed with this screen here, which is the bio and info. So if you decided to write a bio for your character, uh, and if you had a avatar for your character, it would show up here. Okay. And but also, I noticed tab, the, the GM notes only, so if I wanted to make some sneaky yes. notes, I could put that there, right? You could, as the GM, you can keep track of like, oh, this person has a cursed weapon. Cursed weapon is currently eating away at their soul. I mean, not that we but do they that. They think the it's their best friend, but no, not the goblins. It's not the goblins. Uh, you could, on the GM notes, you could say like, this character's weakness is uh, they really will do anything for peanut butter. And and the way you edit that is you just click the little edit, 
And then you just scroll down there. There's bio and info, and then GM notes. Only visible to GM. Anything and they're like, for peanut butter. I can't spell today. And and it's got full markdown support. Like you can do tables. You can do like you can have custom like random. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's really in depth. Um, and I've used that a bunch actually. I just don't talk about it because that ruins the behind the screen stuff. True. True. So for now, we're just gonna click uh, save, and then you go over to character sheet. This is your character sheet. Oh. It'll ask you this. It'll ask you use the character mancer which is their built-in, like, help you build a character thing, which I don't use because I'm a purist, but that's me. Okay. Um, create as an NPC. So if you decide to create um, Jeff the Follower, you would create it as an NPC, which would then make the character sheet look different. Once or again, his name is Obes Who Cut, thank you, and he is a goblin of high standing. Or you can do what I normally do, an edit sheet directly, which just lets you edit the sheet like you would any other time. Um even throughout a campaign, like if you just, when you level up, you could add, um, increase your stats, add feats, add your equipment, blah, 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 blah. So that's your first character. That's your first player's, um, character sheet. So that's awesome. Um, so go ahead and exit out of that. We're going to add one more thing. Okay. Over in, over under the journal, click add. Every campaign needs a start. And the stereotypical one is you're in a tavern and a mysterious hooded figure asks you to do something. Maybe they didn't ask you. Maybe they gave you a note. So go ahead and click handout. Okay. And mysterious by, note. By default, it's called mysterious note. It's like uh, they knew. You then, you then say uh, in player's journals, if you choose nothing, it's there and only you know it's there. And then later you can be like, aha, and here's mysterious note and put ah. it in everybody's journal. Or um, I think it's on the next screen. But um there is a show to all players, and it'll just pop it up on everyone's screen so they can see it. So, for now, we're going to say, don't be in anybody's journal, because it's serious. You want to pop that on them. Yeah. Um, can it be edited controlled by you? This should only be edited controlled by you. Don't let players edit these. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, if, if you want them to be able to edit it, that's fine. If, like, if it's a piece of paper and they have charcoal or something, you can say, like, yeah, cool, you can edit it. So then they, like, start scribbling down on the, the Ooh, paper. Oh, they can subvert things and then slide them across. Yeah. Um, tags, again, tags just help you if you're looking for, like, oh, I've got a million um, notes. You can add things like like who the NPCs mentioned it are, who it's from, um, the session it was from, all these kind of things. Those are just things you can search for in the journal to help you find that note from session two, and now it's session 37. You're like, ah, oh, God, what did that note say? Uh, well, it was session two, so session two note, and then you can up oh this is from session two here here's all the notes that i gave them from session two okay um if you want to, you can drag and drop a file there if you have an image like i personally like to go through and make like nice fancy edited like photoshop it's looking so it actually looks like a note things or you can just have the description of notes which can just be like um I you used, physically I, hide them under someone's keyboard mid campaign I've, I've done that too uh or you can do the really easy version which is just type in what the note says on this. So, for instance, uh, you're goblins, right? Goblins are yeah. uh, enthused by things like mushrooms and zoom juice. You could say, like, yeah. there's, a, there's a fresh stash of mushrooms in the cave to the east. So, mysterious stranger slides your, your party of goblins this note. There's You're a like, fresh stash of mushrooms in the cave to the east with the zoom juice. And then you save that. And, and then you... You pull this up, and then whenever you're ready, you click Show to Players, and it'll pop it up on everyone's screen. Ba -ba! Or you can put it in just one or two people's journals. Oh, yeah, and it'll ask, uh, when you say Show to Players, not visible, do you want to share it to all the players in the game? Awesome! Yeah, so you don't accidentally do that, like, ruin a major plot point. So, that's, cool. that's that's your hook. So your, your goblins now have a thing to do. They have to go to the, the cave to the east and find the mushrooms or whatever we're doing so um one more thing we're gonna just we're gonna finish glossing over all that stuff on this top right here so the compendium includes yeah. all of your things like your your classes your gear your spells things like that by default it's just the sdr stuff which is just the stuff that comes in the player or like the uh the starter box you can buy additional so it has all the stuff from the player's handbook the monster manual the dmg this is uh, Santhar's Guide to Everything, Vol's Guide to Monsters, like 
pick a thing, you can buy it and add it to your campaign so that all those things are searchable and you can literally just, if you're like, oh, I want, I have this feat, you search the feat and then you just literally drag it from this on your character sheet and it will add it in its entirety without having to deal with it. Any of the yeah, other stuff. And that's amazing. Yeah, no, uh, as a player, it is the greatest. When character leveling, you pick and then you just drag it over, then you've got the, oh, it's so good. It's so nice. Um, the next one is the jukebox, where if you decide to be like the next level GM and start doing like music in your campaign, that's where you add all this stuff. Ooh. Um, uh, macros, if you decide to create custom macros for your characters or ter- uh, if you make cards, um, if you decide to have give your players like a deck of many things, you can make a deck of many things within the macros, and then they can show it and draw one of the random cards from the deck of many things and either instantly die lose all of their items, become a god. You know, the things that the deck of many things does. Standard stuff. Sorry, uh, my grimace was not the feature. The feature's awesome, but I, I don't know if everyone else has, like, this deck of many things kind of twitch every time they hear it. Like, whoo, whoo. Yeah. Um, and then the, the final one is your settings, where you edit your display name, so you can set it from, you know, mine says Baron Chief. I get to make it say whatever I want. I get to have, I've actually, as a joke in the past, made it just say god. Um... <laughs> Or you could have it be your character's name, which is the most common thing. And actually, as a GM, I tend to request players do that because it's helpful to me so that I remember their names and do it. So that that's the name that will show up in the chat and at the bottom there. Um, and so then I'm like, ah, yes, so uh, Zandragar, would you please roll whatever instead of J- Jeff, would you roll the thing? Because, I don't know, it feels more immersive using the people's names. Yeah. Uh, but that's where, like, music level, whether or not you're broadcasting voice and video... Um, that's it, where all your settings are. It's the settings tab. I shouldn't have explained settings. <laughs> okay. um, so, so we're gonna click back over to chat really quick. Yep. So we're gonna we're gonna have you create your first dungeon. <gasps> yeah! Dungeon time! <laughs> it's a cave. I'm okay. With zoom this. juice mushrooms. So yeah. what we're gonna have you do? Uh, we're gonna go over on the top left there. The yep. one down there is the freehand tool. By default. It's whatever color your avatar, or the color next to your avatar is. But dungeons aren't, for me, it's like this weird, super light teal color. Okay. So the dungeons aren't that. So let's go with, like, gray. Okay. Uh, and then you can go thin, small, regular, large, extra large. We're just going to go with regular. That's fine. Uh, and then we're just going to draw a little, like, I don't know, a little, a little, a little shape. Whatever your dungeon is shaped. My dungeon shaped like this, much like Bob Ross. Doesn't really matter. This is how your dungeon shaped. Maybe your dungeon has a big entrance. Maybe your dungeon has a small entrance. Maybe your dungeon has a pond in the middle. We don't know. It's your dungeon. We got yeah. happy little pond. Happy little mushrooms. I can put some. I can put some little purple mushrooms in there. Just little like purple mushrooms, yeah. like a little. Um, it would mean that currently the goblins are guarding this stash of mushrooms that other goblins will have to take from them. But that's another story. So. uh... As I accidentally misclick a bunch. Um, so then what you can do is, uh, I think it's part of the default one. Let me double check before I. I'll keep adding to our, our little cave system. Yeah, you can just add whatever you want there. Um, and here's where you can either, if you've purchased marketplace tokens, um, or if you have, if you've decided to go like the extra step and draw your own tokens, uh, you can drag them into here and use them. Or, let's say, um, because your goblins need something to attack, right? Yeah. Let's let's say this particular den is guarded by a dire wolf. Oh, that's spooky. So, what I need you to do is I need you to go over to the, the compendium, which, is, again, is a little eye, and just just type... You can, you can just type wolf. You can type any part of it, and it should show up. Wolf, dire wolf, whatever. Ooh, dire wolf. And then you just click and drag that onto the screen. And it should post a kind of generic token, but I mean, it works. It's, I've got here's the... It's just yeah, I've got the Dire Wolf. Okay. And then uh, if you click the little gear, if you select the token and click yeah. the little gear, uh, this is something that took me a while to figure out. If you click Show Nameplate, where it says Dire Wolf, yeah. That shows it to you, the GM. Okay. If you go over to advanced, and you see player permissions, name, C. Then the players see that it's called a direwolf. 
So if you're just using, like, you're really quickly throwing together a king encounter and you don't have time to get fancy icons, and you're just using the default one, make sure the players can see what they're called. Direwolf, cool. you can be Direwolf A, Direwolf B, Direwolf C. Um, and then, um, yeah, so then what you would do is you would pop open, like, a Direwolf tab. Yeah. Um, and then you have all the stats right here, and you can just, like, literally click on... Um, how do you? Yeah. I see. Uh, so I got the the bio and info. I've got the character mm -hmm. uh, sheet. I've got abilities and attributes. It's all just ready to go there. Yeah, it's all just right there. And then you can either drag it around to to move it during the turn order, or you can use arrow keys to to move it once we're in time. I want to be all fancy for moving it proper. I don't fancy yeah. these goblins' chances. They they may look yeah. like they're in well formation, but this is this is going to end poorly for them. I'm sorry. It's going to end pretty poorly. Um, the little bubbles when you hover over a token, or when yep. you select a token, uh, those are customizable. You can make those be whatever you want. If you go into the, the advanced settings, you can make them represent like their health, and you can add it, have it be a bar, so you can see roughly how much health things have, whatever. Um, and then, like for instance, if you just click on it, though, and just say, like, 45, and then enter, cool. Now things got 45, let's say health. That's It's got 45 health. Anytime that it takes damage, you can click on it and just do minus six and it'll auto subtract the health though it is a or sleepy or whatever that right is. now yeah you can add status effects you can add um aoe's you can do a bajillion different things that's again that is an entire different video but yeah there you go you just created your first campaign yeah you added a character you created your first little encounter you added a hook to get them to the encounter and now you're ready to go you yeah. can invite all your friends or post it and yeah, there you go. That's your first campaign, Will. Yo. You now have the GM's curse. You're never oh. going to be able to be a player again. Fuck, you set me up, Aaron. You set me I up. I did. I'm I'm sorry. Now you're a GM. That's that's how it goes. Piss. Well, friends... Now you can never be a player again. Yeah, now I can never be a player. Brilliant. Well, friends, I hope this has been at least a little bit informative. And hopefully all of you can go through these steps, get a campaign ready to go, and also suffer the GM's curse so that you two never get to be a player again. <laughs> oh, feck. Right. Thank you all for watching. Please check out Memory Equals Null. Link in the doobie doo. Head on over to Roll20. Get yourself all set up. Tell them we sent you. And yeah, we'll see you again for, I don't know, another one? Who knows? I didn't think that far ahead. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. <laughs>